What's up guys, it's Tony G23 and we're back on our factor with some sports prototypes. It has been a while since we've had uh, prototype races on my channel. The last time it was it was actually my Lamont 24 minutes video and that was back in June. So this has been long overdue. Um, today we're going to be taking a look at the P2 cars because if you remember in my Le Mans video we raced uh, my P1 car. I may do a comparison between the two classes but today we're going to take a bunch of P2 cars and just really throw them around the Red Bull Ring in Austria. It's the first time we're going to go to the Red Bull Ring on my channel as well actually. So. Um, the car we're using, it's my own personal P2 car, it's a Morgan Judd uh, P2 car. I believe under the game it's listed as a Pescarolo car, I'm not sure. But um, the only reason I took this one, one, I took this chassis because one, it was the easiest to paint, and two, compared to the Orica 03 which is also on this game, um, the back end is less slidey. I mean, with the P, th P I mean, with the Orica 03 P2 car, you are just sideways everywhere. So, let's go to the Red Bull Ring in Styria, Austria. So, um, we are starting last as we normally do, and I don't know. I've actually managed, and for, the, for once, I've actually managed to get a good frame rate going on my PC. So, lights out, and away we go. It's a three-lap race, so. We're going to run full boost, full max gearing, and the AI are breaking so early for the first corner. I mean, that's got to be like 300 yards before the first corner, before that P2 car started to break. So, we're up to P28, uh, P27. Um, what I like about the P2 cars is that the racing is very close. I mean... I know it may not look it, but we're going to dive it up the inside of all these cars. That's B Herter. That car was about to go for a spin. Like I said, I do n I know very few names here. So, like like Le Mans, I'll say the only ones I really know of. So, uh, first lap, it's been quite a good start for us. We're up to 13th already. We've already made our way through half the field. So. Um, one problem I do have about this car is that, well, if you get the braking wrong, if you put any, st you have to, if you put any steering input in while you're braking, the back end will slide out. So for this car, if you need to brake, you have to brake in a straight line, and then lift off for the corner. So you nearly saw it happen there. We've got two Porsche P2 cars behind us, forcing one another off. Adrian Fernandez, I'm going to call him, he was making a wild and rash move into the final corner, completely cutting off my line, or cutting my line, I'm not sure how you say it. But, really, um, it was actually a very good first lap from us, we're up to P12 from P35, so, I didn't know the Red Bull Ring could hold this many cars. So, I mean, oh! I mean, what I was going back to about breaking in the straight line, that's what you that's what really happens. And you have to be really smooth on applying the power on the way out, otherwise the back end will slide out. I mean, this car is not as bad as the Orica 03, but with the Orica 03, if you even go anywhere near the throttle, you will just light up the rear wheels. So we got is that Sebastian Buemi ahead of us. Yes, it is. I mean, squirt the car. My car squirming under braking again. We've just gone past Buemi and and Simon Paginot, and I believe I just saw the safety car. Has the safety car been deployed or something? Because I never normally see the safety car on our factor at all. So that's a uh, a rare appearance. So these two, I have no idea what they're called. But they're going at it, a hammer and tongs as well. So we go as we go past both of them for fourth position. We uh, come on to the final lap of the race. It's only a three-lap race, and and the top three have pretty much sodded off. So running wide on the exit of the first corner there, 
Uh, we've got a Porsche and an Orica right behind us. Um, it's a weird thing to notice. I'm the only one who's really using this chassis in this race. So, what's the glitching going out on, on the wheel arches? That's really weird. R Factor Toaster Edition confirmed. So, um, yeah, so if any, if any of you want to write or leave your stupid comments in the description why that's happening, recording a gameplay takes a lot of performance out of your PC. So, expect a few things to suffer. Frame rates, graphics, performance in general. So, if you're going to ask me on my F1 games why is your frame rate, rate so poor, there's your answer. So, coming back to the race, um, we've been trying to close up on Stefan Sarazan. It's the last lap of the race, and he's all that stands between us and a podium here at the Red Bull Ring. Coming through the second to last corner, we are so close to him. We're going to make a risky move. We've made contact, but Sarazan was able to hold it. We run wide, and, well, that was a wild and rash move. Um trying to go down the inside from that far back but it's fourth place for us and we are now going to go and do a cool down lap it's something you don't really do in any F1 in any other game I really play so that's, this is why I like R Factor it's much more realistic than F1 so turning the engine boost down now and well using really low revs cool the engine uh, coasting into corners, calling the brakes. That's pretty much what a uh, what most F, what most drivers do in the lap after the race. It's normally just try and cool the car down. So anyway, guys, I hope you have enjoyed today's video. Thank you so very much for watching, and goodbye. <laughs>